Now let's have a look at the frequencies of the plane waves, meaning we're going to look at the electromagnetic spectrum. It's all light to me. If you do electromagnetic field theory, you don't really care about the different frequencies. It's just k and omega. But let's think about the real world just a little bit. So I'm going to draw a really big axis here. And down here, we're going to write the wavelength in meters, because we like to do it in a familiar thing. I won't make you look at this in terms of k. That would be cruel and unusual. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll start at 10 to the minus 15 and 10 to the minus 12. And I'm not going to make the world's most beautiful spectrum because this is printed everywhere on every object you could find, uh, posters and t-shirts and everything. But we're going to look at it from a uh, nanopico femtometer out to a kilometer. And the different regions of the spectrum have different names. So up here above a micron, this is infrared. And this, of course, is ultraviolet down here. And below the ultraviolet at shorter wavelengths is X-ray. And then shorter still is gamma ray. And if we go longer, we've got um, radar, microwave, all these different things. It's obviously subdivided into much finer categories. I'm just giving you rough categories, right? So all these different names are really based on how light interacts with matter is really part of it. It's a sort of size scale, but it's also the way it interacts with matter. And one very special place it interacts with matter is right in here between 400 and 700 nanometers. And that is, of course, visible light. That is optics from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers is roughly where your eye responds. And we all have some weird friend who can see way out in here, or they can see way over there. Or they think they can from some physics lab. We, we, we all know what's happened. Um, if you want to look at the colors in it, oh, it's Roy G. Biv, but it's backwards. So we got the reds over here near 700, and the blues and the violets over here, and green kind of in the middle around 550, okay? So the question is, what is light, right? So light depends on who you are. Most people would just call this light, the stuff that your eye can see. Sometimes the definition of light gets stretched a little bit to a micron because silicon sensors can detect almost exactly the same, 400, a little bit further out to a micron. And if you get to other technologies, you can go further out the infrared, other technologies can go further um, into the UV. But since we're doing an optics course, we mostly care about the properties of electromagnetic radiation and how it interacts with matter in this range, maybe a little bit um, out here. But what really defines these is something I don't want to talk about, and that is photons. Okay? So we're doing classical optics. We can pretty much ignore photons and just treat light as an electromagnetic wave and not worry about it. But the reality is light is a photon. And each photon carries a specific amount of energy. Okay? If you thought about the energy in the electromagnetic wave, you could say, well, it's just diffused throughout the wave. Right? So the, it's hard to say how much it has. A plane wave has infinite amount of energy. But if you think of it as breaking into little particles called photons, which it actually does, each one has a certain amount of energy. And when you compare the energy in that photon to the energy that holds matter together, chemical bonds, that's what creates these different regions to us. Right? Photons with about this much energy are about the right amount to excite something, to excite some receptor. And that's why we see them. That's why they, we have the different colors. If you get to higher energy, they start knocking molecules apart. That's why UV is bad. We don't want to get hit by UV. It uh, messes up your molecules. And if we go to lower energy, oh, it's not quite enough to excite things anymore on a chemical bond level. Um, that's why you can't see it. It can't set off the photoreceptors in your eye. But at lower energy, it can still make things vibrate. And that's what heat is, right? So infrared uh, light heats things. And you go farther down, and then it won't even heat things. And then it just goes right through you. Radar, radio, that's why those can go very long distances. They aren't absorbed by the air, and things like that. 
And if you get more and more energy, then there's things that will go right through you, but will also screw you up. You don't want a lot of exposure to these. And these go right through you all the time, but the dose is very low. So you really have to think about the energy in the photon to understand why these domains exist. If you're really a purist doing true electromagnetic theory, you don't care. Right? They're all just, just different, different omega, different K, who cares? Right? But anyway, that's all I'm gonna say about the electromagnetic spectrum. We're gonna hang out in here for the rest of the class. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you about the electromagnetic spectrum. I meant to point this out because it's kind of humorous. You know, I told you there's a little bit of question, what do you call light? Is it just the part that most people can see? Do we expand it to what your weird friends can see? Do we consider what silicon can see? So I decided to look it up and see what people that write dictionaries say light is. So I looked in the Oxford English Dictionary. It is that natural agent that evolves the functional activity of the organ of sight. So do you think physicists like to be general? They didn't even say I. They said the organ of sight. So I guess for humans then, we define visible light. I guess if you, it's a species the specific that for us, for humans, it's the average 400 to 700. So don't worry about going out to a micron.